call you faithful. Lord, you are faithful. You are so faithful to me. I call you faithful. Lord, you are faithful. Faithful you are and faithful you'll be. I call you holy. Lord, you are holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Lord, you are holy. Holy you are and holy you'll be. Father, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. One more time, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My testimony is, uh, last Sunday, I saw her in the hospital. She is now in Jesus' name in church. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And somebody behind there was like, I don't know what is going to happen, but she, he is now behind there smiling also. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I have... Minutes. <laughs> Luke chapter 23. Luke 23. I'll take you to 24. Verse 13. Um, I want to share with you, thank you for receiving me in the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. I don't take it lightly. I'll give God the glory. Hallelujah. You say amen. amen. It only means that you are available. <laughs> um, I want to share with you and uh, something very easy to know to think about. But it is something which is very good and might be good for your life. Praise the Lord. When Jesus Christ rose again, uh, the disciples didn't think it's going to happen because whatsoever he was talking about, he was like doing it there and then. And now it was really very serious that Jesus was hanged, was put on a tree, cross, died. And seriously, they saw, saw him buried. And they seriously they knew that he is dead. So everybody began to think, what am I going to do next? What is going to happen? Where am I going? Because in his course of ministry, the disciples even asked him that, what are you going to give us? Then he told them, uh, I'm going to give you a hundred here and a hundred there. Praise the Lord. But this time now, this man is dead. How are you going to give us anything a hundred here when you are so beaten like that and even your clothes were taken? Even the tomb, the buried you was not yours. So we don't know what's going to happen. So the disciples, these three days, it was crucial for them, everybody to find their own level. Everybody to go back home or to stay wherever they are, but they didn't know what to do because they were not believing that Jesus Christ is going to rise again. Praise the Lord. But on the day, on the third day of that thing, and Jesus Christ rose. And nobody was thinking that he's rising again. Praise the Lord. I'm going to talk about these two men who were going to a mouse. They were going back home. And I think they were thinking, they were talking many things, asking themselves, what are we going to do? We left home, we don't know when, because they didn't tell us. But we left home, now we are going back. What are we going to find? How are we going to do it? What thing is going to happen? How are the villagers or people in the village, they are going to tell us things are going to be hard on us. How are we going to begin all this? As they were moving, somebody else came and joined them. 
praise the Lord. He joined them and they didn't know who really he was joining them. Praise the Lord. Uh, my simple message today to you is, will you allow somebody into your conversation? Can you allow somebody else to come and interrupt in what you think about? Can, can you really allow him? You never know he might be the savior. You never know he might be the real thing you have been looking for. Can you really be a, 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 a open so that, that something else can come to you and you receive from? Praise the Lord. So these men were moving, these men were walking, these men were going home, and they were talking and talking and talking and talking as we talk all the time. But somehow, this man came in and started asking them, what are you talking about? And they begin to ask him, you read from verse 13, and we ask them, um, are you the only one in Jerusalem who don't know what was happening? Things happened here. This man, we thought that is going to bring back everything to us, but now they killed him and the man is dead. But we think somebody was told us that he rose again, but we don't know, but the man, we saw him dead. Praise the Lord. Thank God they allowed him in. Thank God they had to listen. Even if it's like asking them something which is like awkward, like off the topic, like he didn't know what was happening, but they allowed him in. Church, if we can allow ourselves somebody to speak to us, the, the, the conclusion you have is not the last. It might not be the real thing you need. Somebody else can come and speak to your heart and help you out. But many times we think that this is me, this is what I have to do, period. I don't need any advice, I don't need anybody to talk to me, but let me tell you, Jesus can send someone to help you out. He hasn't left you alone. He wants to help you such that you got the right path. One thing I know about Jesus Christ, I have been telling you, he doesn't hate you. He loves you so much that he wants you to put you on track. There is something I want also to remind you. Jesus is not condemning you what you have been talking about. But he wants to reprove you so that you know. One thing you have to do, you must have a receptive mind. You must have a receptive heart. You must be ready to receive something else. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when we speak to you like this, oh, that's a man from Africa. I don't know whether you tell us something better. But let me tell you, when you sleep, God can speak to you. So allow your mind, allow God to help you. Allow your mind, God, to bring something else because he will never let you down. Oh, let me say them one time. He will never leave you alone. Th these people, they knew what they were doing, but they were discouraged, disappointed by Jesus Christ because all the time they were moving with him, he was promising them heaven and on earth. They were seeing miracles, but they saw him dead. He was so beaten and he was not running away. And he was so much beaten. His body was bruised. Then he told them about the scripture. They told them about the scripture. He told them about the scriptures. But they were listening and listening. Thank God they welcomed him. Church, welcome someone. Welcome the word of God. That is the word which is going to help you to move to the next level. Don't throw away whatsoever comes. Listen. Help me talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, listen. It might be your next step. He might be the person who's going to take another, another step. Let me tell you, God is not going to send angels, by the way. He's not going to send angels to come into your house. He's going to send people like me. He's going to send people like Pastor Randy. He's going to send somebody, even your neighbor. Please look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you might be the one. You might be the one who have the word for me to take me to another level. 
Don't keep quiet. Tell it to me. Help me talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, tell me what the Lord has told you. Uh oh. Praise the Lord. You, you are not so little that you cannot receive the word of God. You are not so bad that the Lord is really throwing you out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just to give you a break. That's why I say praise the Lord. So that you may think. I'm serious talking about this. That let God come into your life. Give him chance to speak to you. The conclusion you have is not the last. I'm going to die. Who told you that you're going to die? I can't be healed. Who told you you can't be healed? It cannot happen. Who told you? Praise the Lord. Until God says, then it is. If he hasn't said, then you can be. Things can be okay. Things can be wow. You can smile again. You can receive it. The doctors will say, mm -mm. then God says, what? Check on him. Please check on Jesus Christ. What does he say? Is it your time for ministry? Is it your time to go? Is it your time to die? No. I always tell my people in my church that there is no death in this church. Sure, there is no death. In all these years, from 1996, I have buried two believers. Only two. Praise the Lord. They lose their loved ones, but not in church. And people, I don't know how to bury. Praise the Lord. But all those who have died, it's by their mistakes. One, he was suffering from AIDS, and he refused to take the medication. Okay, if you want to die, let you die. We shall bury you and you continue our work. But let me tell you, you are not born to die. You are born to live. You are born to be profitable. You are born to grow. You are born to serve the nation. You are born to serve your family. You can do it. It is not too late. Just allow him to tell you something you have not thought about. Yes, he told them all this, but they were not thinking about it. Oh, oh, the Bible says that when the day was fully spent, that's why really they received him. The day was fully spent, he was like he was going. They told him, no, 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 come and stay with us. Because the words have been telling us, they were our life, they were good. Praise the Lord. And then he stayed with them. That's when he revealed himself to them. Maybe if you stay a much longer, a little longer with in the church, then God will reveal to you what? Praise the Lord. Many times you want to be out. We are in and out. There is a, a restaurant here which is in and out. Where did I see it? Somewhere in this country. We don't have it here? Got, yes, I thought in and out. This is not in and out. This is in and stay. Praise the Lord. You come in and you do what? You stay and you find your gifting. And you find what you're supposed to do. Don't go back to a mouse. Stay there. Jesus is risen. He is alive and well. Praise the Lord. That, that's how you're going to receive from him. Let me tell you the things of God, they are not quick like that. Because human beings change. Somebody was asking a question that if God can give us all what we need now, what will happen? I replied and said he cannot make that mistake. Because when he give us all what we need, I'm telling you everybody will be running away. Praise the Lord. He keeps you there so he gives you parts and bits. Parts and bits as he purges you. As parts and bits as he purges you. But you have to stay. Give chance for change. If you don't want to change, somebody said the change will change you. Stay there. Allow God to speak to you. Allow somebody else to come into your life. Open your mind. Open your spirit. There is something else. Maybe they talked about it and they didn't know whether it was going to happen. 
But they allowed Jesus Christ. And he sat with them and he broke the bread. Say, whoa, he was the one. He spoke the scriptures. And those people were, they knew it was late and they were going to sleep. But because they saw Jesus Christ, they said, no, we have to go back. It was late, but they had to go back. When you know, when you find out who you are, let me tell you, you will never sit down. You continue go and tell some others that Jesus is alive and well. Praise the Lord. Get away. Let me tell you. Get away. Let me tell you. Jesus is alive and well. He has a word for you. He want to speak. He want to help you out. Hallelujah. God bless for this time. Oh, I feel the spirit of the Lord. Pastor. It's good. It's good. Look, at look at there at verse 24. Uh, Pastor David's going to pray for you in just a, in a minute. But look at verse 24 there. We're talking about, you see, when God answers your prayer, most of the time we don't see it because we think and live differently than God does. See, it, it, right, verse 24, they, some of these guys were there. It says uh, certain of those who were with us, you see, they, he, they were part of the, the group. They went to the tomb and, and found it just like the women told us. The women said, no, Jesus is alive. Uh, the, the angel told us. And, and they went there and they said, well, we didn't see it. And, and they started rambling. And then Jesus interrupted him, did, didn't they? Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah. Why? See, what we do is we, when we have an encounter in God's presence, we start rambling from our point of view. And we don't see what God is seeing. We don't understand what God is, is trying to convey. And it took, uh, at verse 31, it took, you know, Jesus was sharing the word with him. I think it took many hours. But then as they broke bread together, a revelation hit them. Then they understood. And as soon as they understood, he vanished. Well, why did he vanish? Because the miracle was done. Faith had come into their heart. Yeah, are you getting this today? So don't think that God gets angry with you if you're, if it's, if you're slow to figure it out. <laughs> we, we can't see and, or understand completely what God wants to do. And so that's part of the, the process of, of finding love in a hate-filled world. These disciples experienced the ultimate hatred against their leader, and they didn't know what to do. So we want to just continue that here. Uh, just, Jesus settled the sin issue, period. It's, it's over. But in our hearts, we still think it needs to be dealt with. See, so God has one point of view, and we have another. And sometimes it takes a while for us to figure this out. So this morning, I simply want you to receive what Jesus has done for you. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's your day to receive. Amen, 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 amen. See, only after you receive him can he help you. See, we want him to help us before we will receive him. But he's provided the solution. He's already paid the devil's ransom. He agreed to a price to pay, and he paid it. And so now, say now, if you believe him, say then you'll be free in Jesus' name. But what happens if you choose not to believe him? You see, when we choose not to believe him, we prevent the power of the cross from working in our life. Did Jesus rise from the dead? Absolutely. There's power in the cross. But if you choose not to believe that, there's no power for you. Is it God withholding the power? No, it's us ourselves withholding the power from happening. Jesus made a powerful statement. This is not a negative statement. This is a loving statement in John 8 and verse 24. Jesus said, if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Wow. You see... If we die in our sins, it's not God's doing. It's our doing. 
Because he, he paid the penalty to remove every sin from your life in Jesus' name. So settle it in your heart this morning. Like, like Pastor David said, you are loved by God. You are loved by God. God loves you. Jesus paid the ransom from you. And now you can walk in God's love every moment of every day. I don't care how crazy it may be in the world. You might be in a hate-filled world, but you can walk in the love of Jesus. How many know what I'm talking about? See, he's restoring all of your life, not just some of it. That part you think God can't help you with, He's restoring it in Jesus' name. He's changing you from the inside out. And what is impossible, I know it's impossible. What is impossible for you to do, what you don't have the capacity to do, when God takes over in your life, things beyond your ability just begin to happen. Oh, come on, hallelujah. Look from God's point of view, not your own emotional point of view. I just want to look through one story here together that Jesus declared in Matthew 18. If you have your Bibles, look at Matthew 18. And this story begins by Jesus saying, the kingdom of heaven is like. So this is something, this is how the kingdom operates. This is what God is doing right here at Gateway. This is how God moves by the power of His Holy Spirit. Look at this story. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle account with his servants. You see, God wants to make things right with you. He wants to settle the account. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. That would be like $10 billion or something. You know, say a lot of money. Next verse, verse 25. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. In the culture of that day, if you had a debt and you couldn't pay it, they would confiscate you, your wife, your children, all your property, sell you into slavery, and you would pay off the debt by working for the rest of your life. See, that's how they... Settled the account. There was no chapter 11. There was no bankruptcy. No, you, you were stuck and you had to do it. So they put you in prison. But it wasn't a, a criminal prison. It was a debtor's prison. Okay. All right. And that's what was happening right here. He said he was not able to pay. And so the master commanded that he be sold. Next verse, look at verse 26. Therefore the servant fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Now notice the next verse. Then the master of that servant was what? Moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Three things. Do you see the three things? See, we don't live in a perfect world. How many understand that? We live in a broken world. You may think you have the perfect family. Just give it a few years. Every day you have the opportunity, don't you? Every day something might come up. Every day someone may hurt you. Every day, things might happen to discourage you. Anybody this week got discouraged because of something that may have happened? <laughs> things may come to distract you, to bring fear into your heart. But brothers and sisters, what Jesus has done is so great. It supersedes all of these things. Yes, they are real. But Jesus' victory is far greater. Can you lift your hands? Thank God for this today. May the eyes of your understanding be open today. Now, now, for us, how, how do we know that, that God has forgiven us? Well, we, we've read the story that He took your punishment. Amen? He paid the price for your sin. 
And because he paid it, that gives him the authority to turn to you and forgive you. That's how we know. But in this story here, what was the servant thinking? See, he told the king, notice that. He said, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. He wasn't expecting forgiveness, was he? He wasn't asking for it. He just said, don't throw me in prison. Give me some more time, and I'll figure out a way to do it. Notice he, he wanted to do it himself. But notice, the very first thing the king did, what, what did he do? He was moved with compassion. We talked about the compassion of the Lord. That's that deep, agitating thing that happens deep in your gut, and it doesn't feel good. But it compels you. You have to do something. How many have experienced the, the, the compassion of the Holy Spirit? It moved you to do something. It made you uncomfortable. And the king said, no, I can't, I can't put this man in prison. He was moved with compassion. What did he do? He released him from prison. God wants to release you from every prison this morning in Jesus' name. God wants to release you this morning. Hallelujah. You see, only after he was released could he be forgiven. He said, I'm forgiving you. Of this debt. In fact, I'm going to pay for the debt myself. So here's the critical question. Did the servant believe that the king meant what he said? Doesn't say. But actions speak louder than words, don't they? Look what he did right after this. Next verse, in verse 28. It says, but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, 20 bucks. And he laid hands on him, took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. The very same thing. Verse 30, and he would not. Didn't say he, it didn't say he, and he could not. He said he would not. But went and threw him into the prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved. And they came and told their master all that had been done. Uh-oh. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, just as I've had pit pity on you? Verse 34, And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Now look at Jesus. This is Jesus quoting now. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. We're talking about finding love. When you find love, the very first thing that will always happen, you will be confronted with forgiveness. And you must decide what you're going to do with it. <laughs> See, God has forgiven you of every sin that you have ever done. But His forgiveness can't help you if you do not believe that He meant what He said. Will you receive the forgiveness of God? Or will you reject it? See, finding love begins with forgiveness. This servant would not forgive others. In fact, he was even more violent and more determined to get his money after his encounter with the king. Have you ever wondered why? 
I think he was still trying to pay off his own debt. He still saw himself under this massive debt with no ability to pay it off. And he, he didn't believe the king had really forgiven him of all the debt. He really didn't trust in what the king had said. I mean, after all, the debt is just too great. It's too enormous. How could the king just forgive me? People don't do that. So he was gripped with fear and suspicion. And he didn't believe. He did not believe he was forgiven. For him, the debt was still there. How could he forgive his brother if he himself really hasn't received forgiveness? So he ended up living in torment. Do you, do you know any Christians living in torment today? Delivered into the hands of the torturers. Brothers and sisters, you must hear this. God has already forgiven you. God has already forgiven you. Jesus has the right to forgive you because he was the one to pay the price for you. First Peter 2.24, you know this verse. Look at First Peter 2.24. Himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. In this journey to find love in a hate-filled world, the first thing you will always encounter is God's forgiveness. See, forgiveness stands between you and the love that you want to experience. Yes. Pastor, what do you mean by that? Well, this is what I mean. Do you really believe that God has forgiven you? When you see the enormous price that God was willing to pay for you and believe that He did it for you, it changes how you live, doesn't it? The torment is gone. The fear is gone. The weight is gone. Joy comes. Possibility comes. Like our brother was, as Pastor David was saying, all of a sudden you begin to live and experience life. Quit trying to pay back your debt. God used his servant body. To carry your sin to his cross. Amen. Why did he do that? So you could be rid of it. Not back then, but right now in Jesus' name. He said, he's setting you out of prison this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Free now to walk in love even in a hate-filled world. Many Christians are walking with conditional war, war, love. I'll love them if they change the way they relate to me. After all, we're in a hate-filled world and people shouldn't be hating me. Now, if they hated Jesus, they're going to hate you. And that's a positive word. Notice in the verse it says, His wounds became your healing. His wounds became your healing. So God's love will always confront you. Here's the question, guys. If God has forgiven you, will you forgive what God has forgiven? Will you forgive you? That's a good Facebook picture there, that one there. If God has forgiven you, well, will you forgive you? Or are you think you, you're more important than God? Who paid the price? Will you forgive yourself? Or are you going to continue to live in a world of blaming other people? Here, here's a law that I've discovered through the years. You forgive 
in proportion to the forgiveness, not that God has given to you, but the amount that you will receive. 1 John chapter 4, you know this verse, verse 18 and 19, there's no fear in love. But when fear gets inside, it does something, doesn't it? But perfect love casts out fear. You don't have to cast the fear out. The love does it for you. Because fear involves torment. There's the tormentors. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. It's okay not to be made perfect yet. We've got some more steps to take. Amen. But when fear rises up in your life, that's just an indicator. Oh, no, God loves you, and he has more than what you're experiencing. So fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. But we love him. Why? Because he first loved us. <sighs> Receive the forgiveness of heaven today. But remember, forgiveness is not a license to continue doing the same thing. Someone always pays. Right? When, when an offense is committed, somebody has to pay for it. Right? Right? If you reject God's great forgiveness, ultimately, you're going to end up paying for it yourself. Does that happen to anybody here? Don't lift your hands. <laughs> but know this. That's not the will of God. When justice is prevailing, the sinner pays for it. Right? Is there anything wrong with that? No. No. That's what justice will do. But when forgiveness is granted, the offended person pays instead. God has paid it all for you in Jesus' name, hasn't he? He does not want you to continue in sin. He does not want you to be in bondage. He does not want you to be in torment. He wants you to be free. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He had not received. what The servant still feared. Why? Because he had not received the forgiveness. He didn't understand it quite yet. But God is perfect love, isn't he not? And when God is received, fear must go. You don't need to take another meds. You don't need another psychoanalysis class. No, when, when perfect love gets inside of you, the fear will leave. The depression will leave. And joy will come in Jesus' name. Perfect love will cast out the tormentors in your life. So love will confront you. Love is not just an emotion. Love will confront you. What do you mean? You must forgive you. Otherwise, you're just going to continue to blame somebody else. Seeking relief from the torment that remains in you. Amen. But he's paid the price. He's taken that torment upon himself. And now it is time for you and I to believe it. You need to know this morning that you're forgiven. Amen. Why? Because you still live in a hate-filled world. Hallelujah. <laughs> something, someone will do something to you today. And if you do not know that you are forgiven of your sin, you're going to demand a payment from that person for offending you. You're going to continue in torment. But if you know you're forgiven, as you forgive yourself, it will become easy to forgive somebody else. Hallelujah. Even to the point of paying for their debt. You see, the power of God is activated by receiving God's forgiveness. 
Hallelujah. When you know that you're forgiven, power is going to start coming out of you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The devil will no longer win in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Can you lift your hands and thank him? Thank him this morning. Hallelujah. The devil comes to distract you. Don't be distracted. Stay in the place of God's love. Stay in the place of his forgiveness. Now, you, you may not have the ability or the authority to pardon an offense, but you can always forgive them. You can always forgive. See, forgiveness creates an opportunity to do life together instead of death together. The whole world's doing death together. I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of that, do you? We're doing life together today in Jesus' name. You're under a life sentence in Jesus' name. Turn to your neighbor, you're stuck with me. I like, I like what Pastor David said this morning. Well, this, is, this is in and stay. Nobody's leaving in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor, grab their arm and say, I'm not going to let you go in Jesus' name. That's what love will do. That's what love will do. Amen. Since God has forgiven you, will you forgive you? Live in vital relationship with Jesus every moment of every day. That past moment of pain, yes, it was real, but it doesn't need to rule your life any longer. The ceaseless process of hurt and bitterness and anger and resentment, it stops this morning in Jesus' name. You must receive God's great mercy, receive God's great forgiveness. My God, now, my God, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost here. Do you feel him? One more verse, then we're going to pray. 1 John 1, 8 declares, if, if we say that we have no sin, if, I, if we say we have no sin, sin, what are we doing? See, when, you, when, when I tell you that I'm doing okay, all of you know I'm not. But I don't see it, right? When, when, when we say we have no sin, the only person that doesn't see it is the one saying it because they're deceiving themselves. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the what? Ooh, the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all. I love it. I love it. See, if you pretend that you're free from sin, you're only fooling yourself because all of us can see it. Amen. Oh, brother, you don't understand. I'm, I'm anointed. I'm, I'm blood bought. I'm sanctified. Well, I know you are, but the Bible still says this. And when you admit your sin, guess what? He won't let you down because he loves you. He's already paid the price for you. We sang it this morning. It's in this verse. He is faithful. Faithful you are. He is faithful. He forgives you. How does he forgive you? In himself. When he gave up his life on the cross, he was forgiving you for what you're doing today. Dare to believe it. God thinks and lives in a completely different realm. He's simply waiting to erase all of those things that you're still holding on to in your heart. Let him erase them this morning. Dare to believe God this morning. See, forgiving yourself always changes your identity. You're not the person you think you are. You're more wonderful than that. You're more marvelous than that, don't you? You don't understand. Most people, they, they ignore God's forgiveness. They say, I've heard that. But pastor, you don't understand what's happened to me. Most people still look at their mistake. Their identity is found in their fault. But you must understand, church, your value is not determined by your actions how good or how bad they may be. Your value is determined by what God was willing to pay to have relationship with you. You're much more valuable than you realize. And when Jesus was hanging on the cross, remember, he said, Father, 
Forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Because God loves you, don't cover your sin. Don't hide your sin. Confess your sin. Why? Because that sin is not your identity. That is not who you are. Today, right now, will you open your heart to God? Just close your eyes and lift your hands to the Lord. Will you open your heart to Him? Will you give your control of your life over to Him? See, when you ask God to forgive you, Pastor, I, I've already asked Him to forgive me. I don't have to do this again. I, I'm just doing the word. When you ask God to forgive you again, and you will open your mouth and admit your mistake for just that moment in time, all of a sudden you're at His mercy again. You're just like the servant who knelt before the king. And to do that takes tremendous courage. You might think only weak and inferior people would do that. Not Pentecostal people. I, I don't need to do that anymore. But the exact opposite is really true. You see, becoming vulnerable and placing your power and your control, giving it back to God, placing it in His hands, it takes remarkable maturity to do that. It takes strength. It, it takes bravery. Don't try to avoid this step because forgiveness will always confront you. Finding love begins by finding forgiveness. Finding love begins. The, this miracle of forgiveness is bringing healing to you this morning. This miracle of forgiveness will bind up every hurt that tries to keep you sick, that tries to keep you broken. That free, and this miracle of forgiveness will free you from the prison of offense. So this morning, brothers and sisters, receive forgiveness. And God's presence is going to explode into your heart in Jesus' mighty name. Every fear must go this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Now, if God has forgiven you, will you forgive you? You must forgive yourself. And all of a sudden, you will discover this love in a great hate-filled world. And it won't matter to you. You'll be walking in love and in joy and in peace. Maybe you're here this morning. Everyone close your eyes. Maybe you're here this morning and you feel like you're still in prison and you want to be set free. You want God to take you out of that prison. Lift your hands right now all over this house. One, two, three, four, five. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here today and you've never heard these words and today you want to forgive. You want to receive the forgiveness of heaven. Lift your hands right now all over this house. One, two, three, four. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here today and you're ready to forgive yourself. You're ready to say, you know what, Lord? I made those mistakes. I'm going to confess my sin openly before you, and I'm ready to move forward because I know you love me. If that's you, lift your hands right now all over this house, all over this house. Don't be afraid. Everybody, please stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Pastor David, would you join me up here? If you lifted your hands for any of those things, please come up here quickly, 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 quickly. Right now, 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 now. Pastor David, would you begin to pray for these? Right now, in Jesus' name. There's miracles happening right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Don't, don't miss this. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, Pastor David. Come up real close, guys. I'm so glad. Church, stretch out, stretch out your hand. Forgiveness begins with your own heart. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The spirit of poverty is being broken off. The spirit of homelessness. The spirit of orphan is being broken off. God's putting you in families. Hallelujah. 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 You don't have to pay back the debt. You don't have to pay back the debt. God's paid it for you. Hallelujah. God has paid it for you. That doesn't give you a license to live irresponsibly, but it gives you confidence to move forward in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Just church, church, stretch out your hands toward these that have come. In the name of Jesus. 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 My goodness. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's turning your mourning into to dancing. Hallelujah. 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 May the grace of God, may the peace of God, may the comfort of the Holy Spirit be upon these people that have boldly come. Hallelujah. 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 This is the beginning, a new beginning, a new beginning, a new beginning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Not to worry. Hallelujah. A new beginning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Come on, church, just begin to praise Him. Let thanksgiving rise up out of you. Hallelujah. For those of you that have come to the altar this morning, just those things that have burdened you down, leave them right here. Give them to Jesus right now. Just speak, just say, just say, Lord Jesus, I'm giving you my sin of, fill in the blank, give it to the Lord, and He's going to take it right off of your heart. He's going to take it right out of your heart in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now is the time. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day. There's miracles happening right here. Come on, church. I can't hear you praying. Lift your voices with me. Lift your voice with me. Jesus. 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 You're more than wonderful. Hallelujah. You're more than wonderful. Just stay up here, guys. Don't leave. Just stay up here. Church, I'd, I'd like all the church. Just come up here, guys. Surround these people. If you can. Pastor Nicholas, I want you to pray a benediction prayer. Get ready. Just a minute. Just come up here. We're going we're gonna to make a, a corporate prayer together in just a moment. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. This is good. This is so good. It's good to see you. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Finding love begins by finding forgiveness. I want us to make a corporate prayer together. Would you put up that first slide? There's two slides here. Let's, let's make this prayer together as a body of Christ. Just lift your hands. Make it your words. Say this with me together, all together. Jesus... Say it with me, everyone. Jesus, you bore my sin in your own body on the tree. That gives you the authority to forgive me. So today, I receive your forgiveness. As you have forgiven me, I also forgive and release myself from all my sin. I give them to you. Next slide. I cancel every assignment. Say that again. I cancel every assignment. Say it again. I cancel every assignment that I have created in the name of Jesus. You are bringing goodness and freedom into my life beginning now. In the name of Jesus, I am forgiven and I forgive myself. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Give someone a big hug in Jesus' name. Somebody, Give somebody a big hug in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate together. We're going to have the... Uh, we're going to have lunch together here in just a few minutes. And so just kind of bask in this presence right now. Don't be in a hurry to go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be in a hurry. Hallelujah. Healing in your body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now, you're going to start to do things that maybe you've never done before. What, what is it? It's the love of God in you that's starting to take over in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I want to honor uh, Pastor Nicholas, if you'd please join me up, up here on the platform. I want This is Pastor Nicholas. He and his wife, Jean, Jean, Jeannie, Jeannie, before they got married, she used to attend here. And uh, they're now pastoring in Spokane, Washington. So anytime you're driving to Spokane, you need to look these guys up. But Pastor Nicholas, would you please come up here and just pray a, a prayer of blessing over this house right now and release in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father God, I thank you for this house, Lord. 
I give you all the glory and honor and praise for this house, Lord. And I release a breaker's anointing over this house right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for a breaker's anointing. As they enter into worship, Father, I pray for a breakthrough will happen in your people, Father God. I release it in the name of Jesus, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you have your way in this place. No weapon formed shall prosper, Lord. And every tongue that tries to rise up against this place shall be condemned for righteousness sake Father I thank you Lord that this church is the head and not the tail always above and never beneath Lord greater is he that is in this church than he that is in this world Father God I thank you Jesus that you are the king of this church Lord I thank you Jesus that you are the shepherd of this church and I thank you Father the Spirit of God, I pray, Lord Father God, that you are here. I thank you for your angels, Lord, ministering, being encamped about the four corners of this building, Lord. As people walk in one way, they will exit a different way, Father God. But they will stay planted. For those who are planted by the river. I pray, Father, that you are calling people into this ministry that have a heart for you, for the pastor, and have a vision, Lord. And know what they are called to do. And know what is your heart for this city, Father. And I pray that they will align themselves up with the vision of this house. And I thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Pastor Nicholas and